Hey there, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for joining me for another read along. Today we will be reading chapter five of Omarion's Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. Chapter five, sex, energy, and life force. I started thinking more about sex and the energy tied to it in my 20s. I was searching for a new way to be present and to have a deeper connection to myself. Having women at my disposal got old and to be honest, my energy wasn't aligned with my highest self. For three years, I embarked on a journey of celibacy and it was by far one of the most trying and enlightening decisions I've made as a man. It was also hard as hell and it's definitely not for everyone. Spiritually, I was ready to take on a new path and interconnectedness. I was in my mid-twenties, a new homeowner, and had a live-in girlfriend. Talk about a challenge. I knew no one my age who would have chosen celibacy for themselves, but I'm built differently. When I put my mind to something, even if it means no sex, I stick to it. If it will elevate my mind, body, and soul, I am open to the possibilities and dedicated to showing up and doing the work. The decision to rid myself of sexual distraction shaped and afforded me the space and time to get clear about the man I wanted to be in the world. My goal with celibacy was to get closer to myself and truly understand the importance of what it meant to be close with a woman on an intimate and non-sexual level. Mind you, doing this with a live-in girlfriend made the task of no sex tempting to break. When I started learning that sex was linked to the energy that could lift up or drain, I started looking at my sexual relationships and partners differently. I was at a point in my life where whom I slept with mattered for their sake and for mine. We were exchanging energy, good and bad. Soul ties are real. So being able to have self-control when it came to my sex life was empowering and commanded my full intention. At that time, I was developing my spirituality and exploring the Jehovah's Witness religion. Me and my then girlfriend were embarking on that path together. I was devoted to strengthening my relationship with the creator. When I was introduced to the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, I was intrigued. That religious practice was completely different from anything that I've experienced. Growing up Baptist and enjoying birthday celebrations and holidays was what I was accustomed to. Jehovah's Witnesses were far from what I was familiar with. They don't celebrate holidays or birthdays. The music wasn't the same, and becoming a member required intense studying and knowledge before being able to be baptized. At the time, I was dedicated to learning how to have complete control over myself, my actions, and my mind. I was coming to the realization that I needed to release myself from outside judgment and regain inner clarity and perspective. Being involved with the organization for those few years taught me the importance of discipline, inner power, and the ability to not allow sexual pleasure to consume me. This was one of the many religions I had explored over the years. And while it ended up not being for me, the lessons I learned really challenged me to get honest with myself about where I was investing my time and energy. What I've come to know through my experience is that if in fact sex is a sacred act, it should be an agreement rooted in respect and open communication. Prior to this realization, A lot of my sexual encounters were not in alignment with that. During this early spiritual experience, it became clear to me as a man that love and sex are not synonymous. When I changed my mindset, I changed as a whole and for the better. For me, that looked like focusing on the ways I needed to be more in tune with my spirituality, mind, body, and soul. There was a point in time that having and entering different women was embedded in how I moved through the world. From being a musician and sex symbol to trying to break free from that stereotype took dedication. Most folks may think that's a crazy choice for someone in my position, but it wasn't crazy to me. Abstaining was a liberating experience. It was like I had started the voyage home to my true self, no detours. And yes, it was hard as hell. I love women and being with them, but my needs shifted. My mind was clearer. Everything started to make more sense. Being mindful about the energy I was sharing with people changed the game for me. As a man, it was important for me to be cognizant of where not only my sexual energy was going, but also my emotional and spiritual energy. Life Force Meditation. I am reinvigorated. I make. I hold. I obtain. 
I am. I conduct. I am a force. I lead. I create. I am. I expand. I am omnipresent. I shift. I grow. I am. I have the power over myself. I believe. I trust. I authentically exist. I am. I draw energy from the earth. I uplift. I recharge. I transform. I am a reflection of the universe. Abstaining from sex woke me up spiritually. It allowed me to tap into a newfound discipline and self-awareness, especially when it pertained to pleasure. I think it's easy to get joy and pleasure confused. What I've learned is that there's a difference between the two. Pleasure is fleeting and momentary. Joy, on the other hand, is something that offers stability within ourselves. I was noticing that a lot of men, including myself, weren't attuned to being fully present with women, romantically or platonically. We were also lacking the emotional capacity to be fully present with ourselves. Intense emotions that come with lust and sex can be distracting to our detriment. Taking a step back to see things more clearly in my sexual relationships made room for me to pay closer attention to my platonic and familial relationships as well. Every step of this process opened me up to new ways of thinking and processing my relationships. I became more open to learning thoughtfulness, acceptance, and understanding of women on a more aligned level. All of this is vital because so often there is a disconnect between the two. Investing my energy intentionally in where it counts the most has allowed me to become more clear about using it wisely in all facets of life. Energy check. Sex, energy, and life force. What is the importance of drinking alkaline water? How can you improve your energy by the foods you ingest? What kind of boundaries are you setting for yourself to conserve your energy? What methods can you use to recharge your energy? Is it beneficial to you to share your sacred energy with everyone? Stepping back into the real world where sex is seemingly not a big deal, I was tempted left and right. And if I'm being honest, I had my share of backtracking and having a wild moment or two. I wasn't sure what I wanted to be in a relationship or to date, but I did know that I was ready to not be celibate. I had spent so much time in celibacy that I said, fuck it. I learned what I needed. It was in that moment that really showed me how important my celibacy journey was. I went from nothing to everything and it shook me up. I felt all over the place and needed to recenter. After breaking away from the no sex life, shit came at me fast. And it was then that I truly realized that connecting mentally with women versus only sexually was what I longed for, in or out of a relationship. Having my fuck it moment made me realize that I needed and wanted more than a physical connection. That was where my true desire lived. Things became more apparent and I had to start practicing the intention that I learned during my celibacy season. I learned that a woman must appeal to me more than just by how she looks. Mentally, I knew I needed and wanted to be stimulated, mind, body, and soul. Being physically attracted to a woman is great, but is there an emotional connection for us to talk, have fun together, go places without it just being about intimacy? Men aren't taught how to move through the world in this way often enough. We are encouraged and celebrated to get the girl, fuck her, and keep it moving. That's what makes us a man. That's what makes us the man. The takeaway from celibacy taught me that that shit wasn't where it was at. And that lifestyle gets old quick. I mean, when I got back in the having sex game, it was clear that I had outgrown that behavior. Even when I decided to push back and revert to old ways. Don't get me wrong. The sex was good, but the lack of connection wasn't often worth the temporary pleasure. I believe that we should have, enjoy, and experience sexual pleasure. But there comes the point in our lives where there is more to it than that. Without my journey through celibacy, I wouldn't have had the emotional maturity to decipher the two. 
The experiences of knowing what it felt like to intentionally choose not to have sex with women changed how I looked at relationships and intimately connecting on a deeper mental level. Seeing that there were other ways that I could connect with women was pivotal for me and my growth as a man. Energy check. Journal prompts. Are you willing to give up things in order to get what you want? If so, what are they? Are you happy where you are today? Where do you want to grow and change in your life? How do you practice self-love? What are you trying to attract in your life? Experiencing both sides of the path really showed me what kind of person I wanted to be. Even though I'm not practicing celibacy anymore or in a committed relationship, I carry the lessons from that point in my life close. I know myself well enough now to check in with my energy before sharing it with someone else. I've noticed that if I'm just linking up with someone physically, energetically, I'm not really feeling like myself. I'm off my path, so to speak. And if anything, I'm likely going to be more drained of my energy after our encounter. There have been many hard lessons learned from having sex when I shouldn't have. Sharing our sexual energy with people should be an intentional act, even if it is just pleasure driven. We all have to learn this eventually. With age and time comes wisdom and clarity. As we find ourselves on the path of sex, energy, and its connection to our life force, I want men to realize how powerful our sexual energy is. Being intentional is key to growth and a deeper understanding of ourselves and others. The people we connect with become an extension of us. Taking responsibility for our sexual energy and wellness is crucial. Fucking isn't the only way to prove you're man enough. I'm not here to judge anybody, but I am here to give my fellow man something to think about and consider. While I believe that everyone should have the space and opportunity to freely express themselves, it's definitely important to manage our energy mindfully. I wouldn't know this to be true if I didn't have my own wake-up calls, failures, shortcomings, and missteps along the way. I've experienced both sides of the spectrum. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be able to see why being measured and mindful in all that I do, especially when it comes to sex, is a must. Celibacy as a choice for men isn't discussed regularly. It's no secret that we are raised and taught to find our value in sex, to flex our masculinity, to have as many women on our roster as possible. I was tired of that shallow way of thinking. It's easy to think with your dick. It's much more challenging to be mindful about whom you share sexual energy with. The reason we don't have some of the things we want in life is that we refuse to sacrifice and get uncomfortable. I've been there and I've had to learn the hard way many times. Being celibate for three years, I learned deep self-control and became more aware of my energetic footprint. I wasn't perfect. The urge to have sex wasn't non-existent. It was very much alive and well. But just because the urge was there didn't mean I was going to act on it. Where my energy was going and flowing started to mean more and more to me each passing day. Spiritually, I evolved into a person willing to give things up to transform into my highest self. We have to let go in order to gain. We can't expect true change if we're stuck on staying the same and not challenging ourselves, our thoughts, and our beliefs. I connected with a deep sense of growth and transformation during this chosen path. Being willing to take on the challenge to abstain was a true act of self-love for me. I wasn't taught this growing up, and a lot of folks would have looked at me sideways if they knew I was sacrificing sex for inner peace and clarity. That point in my life showed me how to have inner pleasure and joy. I was elevating and becoming better for myself, and with that, I was also giving myself permission to change on a more intentional level. Everything I thought I knew shifted. I was emotionally expanding in a way I hadn't before. I was getting to know my true self and also gaining the knowledge around being okay with being alone. I was slowly learning how to trust myself and find inner strength through discernment. As a society, there is a stigma around choosing not to have sex for whatever reason. 
I learned that many men have chosen to abstain in an effort to reclaim their energy and exercise discipline to become a more enlightened version of themselves. Ultimately, we are the only ones who can decide to accept that change is necessary to our well-being. That change for most won't be giving up sex, but it was for me. The power to live in the fullness of life is a divine choice, and that choice looks different for each of us. Now, I'm not saying to give up sex and walk into a light of celibacy, but I am saying that when you know what's draining you, you can start taking the steps to repair what needs to be repaired. I'm the type of person who enjoys challenges and taking on things that are deemed hard to do. And while this no sex choice wasn't easy by any means, it offered me clarity, a deeper connection to myself and romantic interests, and it allowed me to turn away from the immediate satisfaction of life and get introspective about the long-term goals I had. I was open to learning how to be one with myself, and I found that so many other men have taken on the task of doing the same. Women are amazing, and I enjoy having sex, but I was steadfast in the decision to find belonging and true joy within myself. I was committed to discovering a connection with the opposite sex on a more authentic level. My greatest takeaway while abstaining was that I am in control of how I show up in the world. Sex is a magical act. So often, we are not with the right partners and we are exchanging emotional and sexual energy that is toxic. Being able to get clear about this taught me that I can create the world I want inside myself. And it was an open invitation to figure out how to create healthy sexual bonds with women that weren't rooted in a shallow way of thinking. In turn, that translated to the energy I attracted outside myself. Another key takeaway is that there is no task too great for me to handle. Being a man to me means being able to discern, be disciplined, and stay committed to what's important. If I could go without sex, I could master anything. I was willing to give up something I enjoyed to get what I wanted, a more aligned, self-loving, a more meaningful life. I was open to changing, growing, and outgrowing to connect with a deeper knowledge of self-awareness and happiness in my life. Everything isn't supposed to be easy, and embarking on the road of celibacy showed me that firsthand in the very best way. Affirmations for sex, energy, and life force. Read these out loud in a seated position. My energy is sacred. I will invest my time wisely. My love is sacred. I will be mindful of the company I keep. My life force is sacred. I will take care when sharing my time and energy with others. I am deserving of love. What it means to me. Where my energy goes is important. My time and love are sacred. There was a time when I wasn't mindful of where my energy was going and flowing. The more I've matured, it's become very clear that where I spend my time, invest my love, and share my energy matters. This affirmation serves as a reminder to stay clear about the intentions I've set over the years when it comes to preserving the most sacred parts of myself and life. Reader Reflection What is sacred to you in your life? How can you protect your time and energy more effectively? Where are you wasting your time and energy? A source of my power is the ability to let things go and enjoy the moments while they last. Life will teach us how to be in tune with ourselves. Clarity Meditation. I am calling in clarity for emotional expansion. I am calling in clarity to create the necessary boundaries in my life to be at ease. I am calling in clarity for a more open heart and mind. I understand that a lack of clarity can cause confusion, stress, and communication roadblocks. I understand that in order to live and lead the life I want, 
Clarity must be a welcomed friend. When clarity emerges in my life, it allows me to free up energy that would otherwise be a hindrance. A moment of clarity feels like time is standing still. Clarity increases my trust and transparency. Clarity is knowing exactly what I want. To see the path is to be the path. Clarity identifies what matters and eliminates my distractions. Clarity shows my mind and heart confirmation. I am calling in abundant clarity. Be mindful, be thoughtful, have courage. Wow, so I really enjoy that chapter and it's very refreshing actually to hear a man speaking in that way because especially in this day and age, you just don't hear a lot of men talking the way that Omarion is speaking in this book as far as like men having sexual discipline and controlling who they give their energy to, who they give their energy and their time to. And it's extremely refreshing to hear that because growing up, women are always told to be careful who you with and be careful who you give yourself to. Don't give yourself to anyone until you find that special someone. But men are not taught the same thing. In fact, they're encouraged and looked at as being some kind of alpha if they're able to get multiple women and do, you know, whatever with anybody, as many as they can get. They're called the man, you know. So it's always been really backwards to me how we're taught so differently as men and women. So to hear someone, a man saying that he went through years of a celibacy journey is really refreshing. And I can definitely relate to what he's reflecting on as far as the power of sex. I I really feel like there's like some kind of agenda going on where the importance and the sacredness of sex has been undermined and downplayed so much and it's caused people to even though we're physically connecting like people really downplay the spiritual connectedness that you have with somebody when you decide to literally become one and exchange energy and exchange frequencies like that's literally what you're doing and no one talks about the importance of choosing the right person to be with, choosing the right person to have sex with and exchange those energies with, and how if you are not exchanging positive energy with someone, like if you are exchanging energy with someone who does not have your best interest at heart or they they don't fit into the kind of standards of life that you have for yourself, It's not explained how having sex with someone like that who doesn't align with who you are and what you want to be or they don't have your best interests at heart. It's never explained how draining that is and how that could actually push you into depression a lot of times and cause you to feel anxiety or start to have negative thoughts enter that your mind into your mind that you may have never had before. So it's really a shame that sex has been so downplayed and made so trivial and made to seem like, you know, it's something that people just do for fun. Like, yeah, it is fun, but you have to be extremely careful about who you're doing it with. And you have to understand where you are mentally and energetically and where they are mentally and energetically. Like even just being around someone who disturbs your energy, you have to pay attention to all those little shifts in energy and pay attention to how you feel around certain people And especially if you're having sex with someone, how you feel before and after you engage with them in that way. And uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say about this particular chapter. Very good read. And it's a it's a breath of fresh air to hear someone other than a woman saying how important sex is and how we have to be careful who we're giving ourselves to, because that's programming and messaging that's so often only geared towards women while men don't really have to have that kind of discipline as well everyone should have that discipline everybody should where energy goes where energy flows energy goes and to talk about 
the energy draining things that happen when you do something like that with someone who is not for you and they don't align with you it's definitely a conversation that needs to be had more often and like I said it's just there must be some kind of agenda I feel to make sex seem like it's trivial and to make it seem like it's not a huge deal when it really is but thank you so much for joining me again on this read along that was chapter five sex energy and life force from the book unbothered the power of choosing joy by omarion you can find these read-alongs um anywhere that says lexi quotes that's l-e-x-c lexi quotes on instagram on youtube and even on my website where hopefully I will be doing more of updating the blogs on that and having more of like a written dialogue on the chapters in this book. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you are listening to this on YouTube, give me five out of five stars on Spotify or Apple Podcasts if you're listening there. And thank you so much for listening. Join me for the next read along. Until then, my name is Lexi. Peace.